Hi guys, so today I'm going to answer a question that I get quite a lot. When you first start out on your printing journey, you might be wondering what sort of card finish do I want for my greetings cards? The two most popular options are matte and gloss, but which one should you choose? Let's find out. Before we get into the bare bones of this video, I want to ask a favour of you. If you are a regular watcher and you haven't yet subscribed, hit the button. It really is such a big help and it will give my channel a boost and help it be seen and found by lots of lovely new viewers. With that said, let's jump in. So as I mentioned, the first option that you're going to need to decide on when picking any card for your greetings card printing is going to be whether or not you would like a matte or a gloss finish. Regular viewers will know that I usually use a matte. And I'm going to be honest, the real reason that I usually use the matte is because it's what I'm most familiar with and I never really found a gloss that I liked. I didn't really dabble and have a look as much as I should have. The few that I did try just had a bit of a cheap looking finish to them. So I soon switched over to my hunt for a decent matte card because I liked how the colours popped. But if we were to print side by side, let's have a look at the pros and cons of each. This here is my favourite for greetings card printing. It is the Paper Cuts 300 GSM matte double sided card. They have kindly sponsored this video, which is amazing because as I said, it's a card supplier that I rave about and have done for years before they even approached me. And it's also exciting because it means that they have gifted me some items to try out. And the one I am most excited to try for today's video is this one their gloss version. So similarly to the matte card, it is a 300 GSM, meaning it's going to be nice and sturdy, but obviously the finish is different. So I'm going to have a look at how these both score, cut and print. I prefer to use blanks when I'm printing. It just speeds the process up and is much easier. So I have a cheap Amazon uh, cutting board and then to give my cards a professional finish, I use this Score Easy uh, scoring board. So because I like to print my cards at five by seven, it means that the card blank itself measures 10 inches wide. There we go, just lining it up there. And the width is going to be seven inches. So that means that's going to be how tall the card is itself when folded. So regular viewers know that when I'm doing anything overhead on tripod, I struggle because I have to work at a slight angle. So if things don't line up and aren't perfect, that's usually the reason why. So that was the matte card. It's the one that I'm most used to uh, obviously cutting. And now let's try with the gloss. From a thickness point of view, I would say that the gloss feels marginally, and I mean marginally, thicker. They're both wonderfully sturdy, and that is the biggest reason that I use paper cuts, because sometimes a 300 GSM can feel much more closer to a 250. It seems to cut really well, nice and smooth. There's no jagged edges. And now let's just go for the seven inches as well. And there we go. So cut wise, they both cut exactly the same. You can already see the lights overhead reflecting off that. I'm now gonna see how each of them scores. I'm going to start with my regular which is the matte card. There's my, um, I believe it's called a, a boner. Okay, so I'm going to line it up. You can see that I've added this bit of washi tape there. And this is so that I can line it up with this star here. Now, forgive me if the camera shakes, it is very difficult to try and get to the star because it is exactly where the camera is. Bear with me. You want to come down with a little bit of pressure 
but slowly for the first one and then I like to do mine two or three times so there we go and I don't know if that's picking up on camera possibly not but you can maybe see on the other side possibly not it's got a nice raised ridge there which when folded just gives a nice professional finish so now let's try with the gloss Now, you may not be able to see, but I'm sure you probably heard, my boner needs replacing. It's ever so slightly beginning to break down on the tip. And obviously you don't really want that because it's going to leave marks on your card. And it just means that the application isn't going to be as smooth as it should be. So that's something I'm going to definitely be replacing in the next few weeks. But that was nice and smooth. It's gone through really well. I think this one might pick up a bit better on the camera because of the light reflection. So I wouldn't really say that I have a preference. They both cut exactly the same and they both score really well as well. So now let's get on to the most important part, in my opinion, printing. When I'm testing out different types of card for my greetings cards, the first thing I like to start with is a full colour design. This design just shows up any imperfections that may happen when printing on the card. It's also good to see how the ink is going to react with the card itself because it covers such a large surface area. So you can see this is the card here that I'm going to print. The only difference uh, between these two is going to be the media type that I set. So I obviously have my Canon IP8750. If you have any uh, need for colour profile settings, check out my other videos and you can find some help there. Otherwise, the most important thing to do when printing on any type of card is to make sure that you are selecting the correct finish in the printer settings. This will give you a much better result and hopefully help you to match what prints on the card to what you have on screen. Now this is why I like to choose a block colour when I'm testing for printing. I'm not sure if this is going to pick up on camera so I'm going to show some side by side unedited photos but there is quite the difference here. The matte has a very subtle kind of mottling texture to the print and it's also lighter. It's a little bit lighter than what's on the screen but the gloss looks beautiful um, it's got a great depth of colour to it it is a lot deeper and there's none of that mottling either in truth it is slightly darker than what is showing on screen for a design like this it's absolutely fine but obviously for fine art printing you would have your screen calibrated anyway so it wouldn't be such an issue or you could use uh, software such as uh, Photoshop to just lighten or darken the image to make sure that you get decent prints every time. But I have to say, I'm really impressed. In fact, I'm so impressed that I'm going to change the description on this card design and from now on, I'm going to be using a gloss. So I think we can all agree that these look great, but what if we're not just printing with a single color? I mean, because let's be honest, most card designs have got several colors in at least. So now when I'm testing card, I would move on to having a look at some of my more colourful designs and see how they both stand up. I've printed these and you can see side by side colour wise, there's not really much of a difference. Uh, the gloss here just kind of looks slightly deeper. The colour itself is a greater depth to it. However, when you get to the lighter colours like the pastel background, I prefer it on the matte card. Um, I'm not sure why, I just think it looks slightly better, it's more even. Um, the way that the light reflects on the gloss, it just kind of distracts a little bit with the lighter colours. I've just knocked these two designs off on A5 so you can see. This one is the gloss, this one is the matte. So if you have a look there at the bottom, the lighter bunny, um, the pastel colours there, it looks 
a little darker on the gloss compared to the matte and this one the matte is actually closer than this one to what is on my screen that said the darker colors such as the pink at the top and the dark charcoal text at the bottom I think look better on the gloss as that depth of color there and again if we look at the top blue one the bunny on the blue on the gloss this one is just slightly darker on that so I think if I was going to use this for more pastel colours like these designs, I would definitely be sticking with the matte. I do like the gloss and I am definitely going to have a look at some of my designs to see which ones can be changed over. So I'm in a bit of a conundrum. I've always been a matte finish girl, but I definitely am not afraid to hold my hands up um, and say I was wrong. <laughs> I had tried out many different finishes before of the matte and as I said previously I tried a few on the gloss and they just looked really cheap and tacky. I was also slightly worried, um, although we all know when you're handling card for printing it should always be handled from the edges, um, occasionally it's impossible to completely prevent oil transfer from your fingers to the card. This hasn't really been such of an issue with the matte, but when I tried some other brands of gloss, it left like a fingerprinty residue that you could see, and then uh, when it was printed, it affected the print, which wasn't great uh, because of obviously to the naked eye, they're impossible to see the oils. Uh, they dry onto this, and then obviously it was just kind of leaving little um, marks in the print itself, and it took me a while to figure out what it was. But the paper cuts finish is completely different. It doesn't look tacky. There's been none of this oil transfer that I was worried about. And like I said, on the darker colors and the block colors, like on the wine card here, they look fantastic. Uh, the way it reflects the light as well, it's just really vivid. Whereas the matte, it just seems a bit duller on the darker colors. So, final thoughts. I'm now going to have to go back through my designs and have a bit of a play because ultimately I want to be able to achieve the best print output that I can at home for my customers and I can now see firsthand that matte isn't necessarily always right for my designs. So where does that leave you? Um, you may be thinking you haven't really helped, you've not given me an answer. I'm going to say have a little play because you may be like me and you have a lot of different card designs in your collection and some are going to work better with the matte and some are going to work better with the gloss and the good thing about uh, ordering from one place um, such as paper cuts means that obviously you can get it all in one go and um, they also have deals on sporadically and they also offer free postage when you spend over a certain amount I've just double checked and they currently have an offer on where if you spend over £30 you get free delivery. If you can't quite make your basket up to that, delivery is fairly cheap. I think on my last order I paid £4.50, which compared to a lots of other places isn't a lot at all. And at the moment they have special offers on the Mac Photo card as well, so I'm going to drop a link down below so that you can have a look. There's also some other benefits to this specific paper cuts gloss and that is that it's acid free, meaning that anything that you print with it isn't going to yellow over time, which is a great bonus, especially if you make keepsake cards. Um, some of mine that I do with the photos spelled out in the uh, names like Grandad and Daddy and Mummy. Um, I've been told by customers that they have framed them up and kept them. So it's nice to know that these designs aren't going to fade with time due to acid in the finish. These are also waterproof, um, which again, in some circumstances can be really handy. It means any accidental spills, you don't have to worry about quite so much. Both the gloss and the matte both come in um, lots of different GSM finishes. So although I'm able to use a 300 GSM to go through my Canon, I understand that not everybody can do that. So the 260 GSM that they offer is still really sturdy and most printers can cope with that as well um, and there are a huge range 
So if you're going to do art prints, you may decide to either obviously scale up or scale down on the GSM. I would definitely say that there is no one size fits all, whether you're doing greetings cards or artwork or prints uh, or invitations. The best thing to do is obviously just have a little play. Now I do understand that obviously costs do mount up when you need to do this. This is why I would definitely take advantage of the special deals that they currently have on. Um, so this just enables you to save a bit of pennies, uh, which is always helpful. And again, with your printer settings, you will need to be testing these out. You don't necessarily have to print a card each time. You can just do what I've done. These have been cut down to A5 and I just obviously use like a tester sheet, pop a load of them on there. So you can do the same for the gloss and the same for a mat. And then you can just use that to just decide which application is going to be best for you for each of the designs. I hope you found this interesting. It's been an absolute pleasure to be able to test these out. It's definitely given me some food for thought and it's also created some more work for me. I'm going to have to go through those designs and decide which ones print best on the gloss versus the matte. A big thank you to Paper Cuts for sponsoring this video. As mentioned before, all views expressed in it are completely my own. Um, Paper Cuts are a company that I have been using for many years before they approached me and it's a company that I always recommend. You can hear their name constantly throughout all of my other videos. If you did find this interesting, then hit me a comment down below. Let me know what did you enjoy most about it. We are well on our way to being uh, monetized with ad spend, which again, for me as a small creator, it's fantastic news so a great big thank you to all of you you are the guys that have made this possible don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already keep your eyes peeled because i have a video coming up which is going to dish the dirt on how much i actually earned in the first quarter of 2024 and i will see you all next time bye